Oh my goodness. Dude, my, my mic is so big. And welcome back. This is another pl episode of Horseplay right here, right now. And of course, I don't even read the show notes when I actually start the show. <laughs> Normie's still mouthing her what she's saying. We have a whole... I want to use the word plethora, because that just sounds like a really smart word today. You can't use it after Normie's, a whole, though. I can, a whole plethora. Yes, you can. It's, like it's a whole, whole, whole bunch play. of people. It's like a whole, whole bunch. Plethora would... <laughs> Welcome to episode 11, <laughs> Night of the I'm Zombie out. Geeks, <laughs> part two. And we have back with us, Maddo McFly. This is all our, uh, we all have Twitters as well. You guys can catch us right here. And then right next to him, we have Normie at Normie477. Freeman Daddy 5, Mr. Pimp himself at Freeman Daddy 5. And Yogi Zilla right down on the bottom at Yogi Zilla. And of course, right here at Obi-Wan-X2. Welcome to Horseplay. And um, hey, guys, what's going on? Hello, Welcome back. Obi. A fine night it is tonight to talk. <laughs> that, dude, yeah. Matt, totally. Matt was already trying to get a head start on derailing us again. He was. Nope. And I was just like, I'm not even going to have it today. I'm just going to. Out of the way. What's on the docket for tonight, good sir? He's trying to be a stupid idiot about grammar. Uh, he is. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even mad. Grammar? I'm not even. I ain't even mad. I have a whole plethora of love for you guys, so I can't. I wait. ain't even mad, man. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about zombies again, just because we want to. <sighs> Somebody's having a. Pooping problem? Maybe constipated zombie or something? <laughs> constipated <laughs> Const zombie right there. Constipated zombie. Urgh, I can't poop. Urgh. Obi, we're excited <laughs> to start The Walking Dead with you this week. We're glad Dude, again. Oh, again, Freeman. Again, you're back. Uh, now, I want to know, are you going to have more interesting things to say? <laughs> oh... <laughs> For you Obi's guys that are just, over there. for you guys that are just listening, fired. for you guys that are just listening, no, I'm not. Let me finish that thought. I went down with it's my seat on accident. Though. Not interesting to say, as in more. Oh, okay. Hey, but we're gonna try to get without the derail because I can derail us enough. And Yogi, I have to keep him curbed. Um, <laughs> guys are just you. I, I got three of you guys here now. I don't know about Normie. I, she's only been on the show once. And she's trying to spell out something to somebody. So whoever's watching, if she, if you're watching actually and just and, and if you're just actually listening right now, she's actually spelling out, you know, in sign language with her fingers what she's trying to say. <laughs> I'm saying that you're SOL if you're the oh. one that could keep us in track and there's four of us that are going to derail you. <laughs> Got it. We'll start with Matt. What's going on, man? How you been doing last week? Been thinking about some more so, zombies. I've been catching up. I have too. You've been catching up in The Walking Dead. Oh, that's great to hear. Because you know, last week we tried getting into it. I felt bad because I was giving away some stuff. But uh, I'm excited now because you're caught up. I am. I will tell you here in a minute, and I will get it from everybody. So, okay. what you been up to, man? What am I been up to? Ah, uh, nothing. Not not much. I've been up to this podcast. Doing other podcasts, uh, working my ass off, and surviving. If you if you see, we actually the main artery coming out of Barry, which is where I live, had a huge like hundred car pileup today. So everyone was kind of Ooh. told just to stay home because well, it's a whiteout right now. It's it's basically everyone just stay home and don't go outside and don't travel. So it's been like that for a few days. So that's my life is getting cabin feverish and then coming on podcasts and derailing the shit out of them. <laughs> of course, that's what you do. Well, 
And it's... welcome back, sir. Welcome back. Normie, how are you doing, you darling? Welcome what back. Have what have you been doing the last... I am doing good. <clears throat> um... <clears throat> Uh-oh, what did I miss? What have you no, been doing the last Matt... couple weeks, sir? <laughs> what? The... Matt's being bad boy. <laughs> You're going to have plenty of time to talk. I guarantee Shang, it, because I have some good stuff for you this week. <laughs> Normie, what have you been doing this this uh, last couple oh, weeks since we've seen you last time? Um, I don't know, just healing and... What? <laughs> what did he say? Anyways, and kind of upset, because we just got the news. Oh, now What's I'm wrong? still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Yeah, because oh, you guys fine. are looking at each other like... What's she saying? Oh, so it's we just kind of got the news that we're getting of a man named Brady. Eight to ten inches more of snow next oh, week. You, you like eight to ten inches. Yeah, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> 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 no, that's a lot of snow. That's a dangerous amount of snow. Guys, I'm being serious here. What? Uh, okay, Matt. What's up, man? Are, are you on uppers tonight? <laughs> I think John Jacobson is rubbing off on you. He's usually the king of derailing, and now yeah. you're like the devious. This is what you get past eleven o'clock. Is <laughs> is delirious? Kind of should be on a couch, not talking to anybody, Matt. <laughs> oh, we're happy to have you, man. I'm I'm happy to be here. I'm sorry. I will slow my roll. <laughs> no, Normie, dude, you're, you're getting good. Eight to... <laughs> you guys are great. Normie, you're getting eight to ten inches. How does it feel? Is it? <laughs> I've asked him on his door. <laughs> oh Lord. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Same as Joel, I guess. <laughs> Whoa. Hey now. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I'm just gonna sip my coffee now. For Me those, too. For those that are just listening on this, you guys have to catch out the live show. <laughs> it is so funny. And if you guys were not even, I haven't been talking because I can't, <laughs> because I've been laughing so hard. Okay. Freeman, how you doing, been doing, buddy? She's getting, I've got eight to ten inches. <laughs> <laughs> you got a dipper on the air here, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing good. I've been doing good this week. You know, uh, usually I work uh, four days a week. Uh, we've been working a lot of overtime. Usually I work Monday through Thursday. So, you know, we're back on that schedule this week, so I actually have tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday off. So, you know, I've really been just preparing for a nice weekend. It's supposed to be, like, in the, like, 72 degrees here Sunday. But, uh, you know, just us, you know, it's been a busy week with Zombie Cash. You know, we, we've got a lot of promising things coming up, and, it, you know, it's been it's been good for us in the zombie industry uh, as Zombie Cash grows, man. But uh, it's it's been a really sweet week for Zombie Cash. You know, I've just been... Giddy about some things. It's exciting times, Freeman. Giddy. It is. It We're is. Absolutely. And we got the full zombie cast minus Tedekin, so it's pretty cool to have a whole crew here tonight. Yeah, Tedekin is awesome, too. He rounds us out. He does. Although, absolutely. it would we'd be full-on derail mode if Tedekin was here as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the last I'm week was you, bad. Obi. You're gonna be gone. We're, yeah. we're at capacity right now. I my wife's say, gonna I say that. My wife's gonna get up for work at six, and you're still gonna. What the? <laughs> what the you're stupid. <laughs> Why do you do this? <laughs> you're doing. You went well, That's awesome, today, and man. and and I hope Matt. Sorry guys. Um, and what? I hope um Freeman that I, I if I'd still love to come on some Sunday night to uh to um the zombie cast. Because I could say that I've been on a different podcast than my own. That would be yeah. knuckleballer on Sundays. Well, oh. sun, well, I don't. Well, eat, mon, Sunday and Monday. How's that? Knuckleballa oh. and then zombie cast. Do it first. Yeah, yeah, we definitely got to do it. You know, me and uh, me and Norma, we both do knuckleballer and zombie cast, and Matt uh, joins us for zombie cast. But yeah, dude, you're you're always welcome to join us, man, at any time. And uh, derailing is a a thing that really you can't do on knuckleball because it's uh it's a derailed show. <laughs> yeah, and if I everybody think... go ahead. If if Obi and I come together, we'll find a way to derail it. <laughs> there you go. And, and I and it, as everybody's listening too. Yes, I just invited myself to their podcasts, um, but it went well. So hopefully, <laughs> if I do that to somebody <laughs> else, it doesn't bite me in the ass. Or... 
But anyway, what's no, going Sean's on? always welcoming, and uh, it's it's always a good group. <clears throat> Monday nights are fun, aren't they, guys? They are. They are. Monday nights. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Monday night we have is. a blast. Yogi, what you been doing, pimping? <laughs> so yeah, just uh. You got any episode. good new news? Tell it today. He's smile. He's smiling with TV eyes again. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is. Uh, he looks like the devil right there. It's like geez, shiny eyes. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Square eyes. They're glowing. <laughs> <laughs> I just re I just realized something that The Walking What's Dead that? season four is following our uh, enumeration because we just, they're up to episode eleven. We're up to episode eleven. Meant to be nice. Whoa, that just blew my mind. I can't even say anything after that. <laughs> well, what is Obi up to? What's yeah, Obi what, been up to? What's Obi been up to? Oh, dude. No, what, no, no, no. What episode? Oh, well, I think we're gonna get to that later. I, I think he's holding off on that till we get to the Walking Dead talk. But uh, so yeah, uh, let's see what's been going on. I've been I've been uh wrestling with the flu because everybody in my house is getting sick. And then uh, my kids like invite friends over, and one of them's like coughing his lungs off. He's like, <laughs> and I swear he's dying from like the the plague or something. <laughs> it's like something straight out of The Walking Dead. And I'm like, why are you inviting people that are sick to the house? I would straight up I mean, tell that kid, take your ass home. Yeah, so Just I've been like, like him to the curb. Man. Yeah, I didn't want to be ugly, but you know, like the past. Like two or three days, I've been like really lethargic, and I'm like, oh, I hate feeling like this, and I'm just trying to. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna rest up, you know, get, get lots of rest, get drink my fluids and all that good stuff that the doctors tell you, and then I'll be ready for horseplay. That's pretty much it. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Very nice. Do you believe in the flu shot? No, I think it makes. You, it? I think it makes you more sick good. than it. That it. Uh... Oh wait, are we gonna get a conspiracy no theories way. here? I love the, the flu shot. Well, no, I don't yeah. believe in the flu shot either. Uh oh. I've Are never had it, and I don't plan serious. to. Yes. Do you think it tracks oh, you for DNA for alien pickup <laughs> or something like that? <laughs> no, it's the flu is a virus. It's not a bacteria, so it's constantly mutating. So the you know. Doctors are, are, and scientists are only guessing what the strand is going to be, and your body changes the strand itself. So if it's but not 100% guaranteed, I'm not going to get the flu shot, the flu, then I'm not going to take it, because guess what? Not. Knowing my body, I'll probably get the flu with that stupid the strand on my body. So ripped through our house like a tornado. <laughs> and we're, we're left wondering, like, well, we, we got it. So we're left wondering next season, you might as well just try a flu shot. It, you know, it might... It might safeguard us next time around because honestly, it took us out of commission for a week. First, Mariana, then myself, and then uh, Xander started getting all crazy. So, uh, I do no, I def definitely understand what you're saying. I just we were we're wondering like, you know what? Even if it doesn't work, at least it might help. Except for well, the whole alien do you, DNA track stuff. Do you guys? Think... <laughs> and and let me tell you, it's funny you say that, but my wife believes that stuff. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, I'm just making sure no one is listening. <laughs> She's right <laughs> here. <laughs> But do you guys feel like look at Matt's crazy? <laughs> look at himself. Just, just but uh, talk her down. Do you guys do you guys feel like uh the, the you believe like the whole hand sanitizer thing is kind of uh pointless? Like some people feel like if you use too much hand sanitizer, you're breeding super germs or whatever, super bacteria. I believe there's truth to the theory that like you need a certain amount of bacteria on your hand, and if you're too obsessive about that stuff, you're not you're gonna destroy your ability to create natural immunities and you know have the ability to protect yourself so My i don't friend know is people like that. yeah the people carry it around like every single time they touch something every single time they touch something i, touch something, <laughs> I think that's definitely like a little obsessive but you no know, hospitals you guys My friends like, kids like like fall and get sick all the, or not fall and get sick but they get sick all the time cuz she's constantly uh, sanitizing them so any like anything that's going around they get it like tenfold because their body's completely not immune to just regular germs that are out there i think we had this conversation before i'm getting some deja vu i, I swear that we had a conversation yes. about how kids yes. need to be dirty to a degree we did, because I... it was the last time she was on our show was it <laughs> Gosh, yes, it was. Was. <laughs> that's how you know we're parents <laughs> yeah well, we do want to do, if you guys are new to horseplay, we are live every Thursday, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on this channel, Obi-Wan X2. Um, but we do have some, you know, possibly here in the th near future, we're going to be actually uh, consolidating some of our social medias. Um, social medias? Yeah, social media. 
um, and actually creating maybe a a uh, maybe possibly a different stream, or you know, we just haven't decided yet. But as of right now, it's going to stay right here, and we do want to make sure that we uh, that we do appreciate everybody's support. We also hang out um, in channel allgames.com, and uh, we just want to give some. Um, oh, I'm sorry, rrc.gamesurge.net. Come on by and let us know. Uh, let the gang know on horse. Wow, I'm reading this all wrong, and I'm reading a script. That's funny. Come on by and let us know the gang at horse place sent you. Okay, let let them know. He wrote it wrong. That's why I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> let them know that we sent you guys. Mention us. Going under the bus. <laughs> exactly. You know. <laughs> but we do want to give shout outs to. <laughs> we do want to give shout outs to Tim Curtis, <laughs> Fang, Opti, James, Horton <laughs> Guard. Did I say that right? Yep. And uh, Jake and the rest of the gang, we do appreciate the support from uh, all those guys as well. Don't forget to tweet us. Uh, we do have our, our our Twitters right here, um, right under everybody's is right underneath their face actually, um, throughout the show and any time that even when we're not on the show. So, uh, but at least last but not least, we do want to say um, you guys make sure you guys go hit up uh, Geeky Antics Network Global, and it's uh, Gang for short. Um, it is in full effect. It is um, uh, Yogi's baby. Uh, it's it's ours, but it's it's Yogi's baby. We guys really we really want you guys to uh, um, come on and hang out with us and just and just get going because we just we love to talk. As you guys can see, I'm talking like a freaking woman on. Everybody's what? nodding. Yeah, on what? nothing. <laughs> nothing. Finish that sentence, Obi. <laughs> I'm scared. A woman on? Yeah, Normie wants to know. A woman on what? <clears throat> on a bed of lettuce? Pills? Several cups of coffee. On roller skates? <laughs> on uh, high on life? Y yeah. On a woman on a high on a trampoline? Okay, on hey, a I'm not. For a high hey, big job? I'm not getting teamed up on here. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. On the right track to financial security? You know what? Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. Matt, you know what? You just need to just hit Alt F4 and then just yeah. reinstall Windows. I don't have Windows. I'm on a Mac. Oh, yeah. On a, on a, on a... That's why I said it. Listen to what I just said. Oh. <laughs> on an Apple, it's something it's like... Are you on a Mac? On a Mac, it's squiggly line Apple and... I'm on a Mac. <laughs> yeah, Sean, you know I'm on a Mac. I use iMac all the time. Oh wait, here's an F4. What's it? What does this do? Your man crushed. Oh, it's changed, you just changed the brightness or something. Oh, look at that. I miss the old days of, of gaming on a PC when you would tell someone, "Hey, if you want to activate the cheats, press Alt F4," and people would do it. And you see everybody get disconnected from the server. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's horrible. <laughs> I used to do this shit all the time. It's funnier than hell, though. Sorry. I mean, get people that actually do it and say. You know, hey man, I got a good add-on for you when we're playing WoW. Hit Alt F4, uh, reinstall totally Windows, and then go to this place right here. And they'd sit there like for a day and a half. Like, I have to reinstall Windows like you told me to, and it won't work. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Obi, what's on your cup? <laughs> Mazel tov. It's Eeyore. <laughs> we're talking about he's the world's first famous the emo. pimp daddy himself. <laughs> Well, you know, Whip. I like it when you call me Big Papa. <laughs> yeah, more of that. <laughs> what? 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 She didn't even finish it. I noticed that. our show makes uh, Normie dance, so that's good. That's good. That means she's in a good mood. <laughs> I'm, I'm high. As I'm high? I'm not high. I'd be sleeping if I were. Anyways. How dare you say that? <laughs> I'm with you there, Matt. I'm, I'm with you. I, I hear you, brother. We I, hear you. I wouldn't be functional if that were the case. I I'm just that. honestly in weird nighttime mode. We like it though. It's horse place. That's appropriate. There you <laughs> go. You're getting a different side. It's the dopeness. It's the dopeness, yo. The dopeness, yo. Cops so coming trying to snatch the dopeness. Pipe. I find my hookah pipe. Would you guys want to see my Egyptian hookah pipe? Yes. Oh my God. All right. One sure, second. You guys keep talking. Well, while well, Matt grabs a uh, hookah pipe. We have, away, so. we, have, we have a we have a chalice pipe here that we, that we bought in Jamaica. Yeah. And, and the bowl on it is like about the size of a lemon. And yeah, you, you, you can put like half 
half green in it and half uh, sage to open the lungs up. What do you mean Chat green? Green in it, well. <laughs> dun, we dun, dun. This looks like something that Indiana Jones would find and like, there you go. Whoa, what this the heck? Half, this is half, it's, it's, it's like, like, is that like a NASCAR trophy? This is the, this is the top part. My buddy moved, <laughs> my buddy moved to Australia. It looks like the, and, like the Crackhead Stanley Cup. Crackhead Stanley Cup, that's a great one. <laughs> Wait, and here's the here's the base for it. There's this ornate vase that you put on you the bottom. A, you got a base and everything. <laughs> that kind of intricate. Yep. So I was pa we were moving my house last time, and the movers found this, and instantly they were like my best friend for the entire move. It was hilarious. <laughs> There's a lot of hookah. Shop Why is that, Matt? Carolina, just like flavored. I don't know. So I'm just curious. For, uh, you know. Sage and water. Yeah. Actually, I, I haven't broken this out since I moved. Sage and water. Well, I noticed so, the uh, hookah, so annoying. hookah bars are, are growing in popularity because a lot of uh, states uh, or just ca counties and certain ki cities and states are uh, banning smoking indoors unless the business has a certain kind of, you know, thing. So, right. like, a hookah bar is, like, one of the loopholes in a lot of places. Like, you may not be able to smoke in a bar, but you go to a hookah bar, and it's all right because that's it's the a workaround. Weird. Yeah, it's a workaround. I don't know. Somehow that's, that's an exception. That's but funny. anyway... So uh, let's kick off officially our Man Crushes and Geek Girls segment. Sweet. We're going to get to know our guests a little better. I mean, we had uh, you guys in previous episodes, but we're going to switch things up a little bit. And again, we want to thank you for joining us at this obscene hour. I know it's tough for, for the most normal people, but we're not normal here. We're, we're a little funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, welcome for, you know, to, the, to the Midnight Crew. You know, that's how we roll. Yeah. Normally, let's Rolling play. with yeah. the homies. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> That's gonna be the meme. <laughs> I'm gonna meme that. I'm gonna make it into a vine, Norm. You gotta be you careful. Memed. <laughs> so um, we might be switching to an earlier time uh, eventually, but I, I like this midnight crew thing. You know. Um, Forget the breakfast club. Nobody does. Isaac Fallon, though. <laughs> so for us, just just Poor to, Jimmy. <laughs> we have our friends and extended gang family here. Uh, Sean is the <laughs> of Knuckleballer Radio and Zombiecast, and we got Sean as well. Uh, well, we said Sean already. We got Matt Bradford. We got Normie. Is it Normie late or latte? Because I know, I know. Uh... Latte. <laughs> <laughs> Sean calls me latte, but it's Norm. I I put it as Normie late. Okay, let's make you sure. But so we're it, just it, gonna it, call her Normie latte. But latte Hold sounds the kind of like French. Hold the whip, crane. <laughs> Hey. Add the double cherry, please. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, got oh my. we got Zombie Cast minus Teddy Cam. We got Knuckleballer Radio mi minus Sodoom. So it's pretty cool. EGO. Yeah. EGO minus <laughs> John and Michelle. <laughs> True. That too. Hey, I'm on page 67 of the notes. I haven't got to the. <laughs> <laughs> We're on paragraph three, Sean. Follow, don't, follow along. Hey, don't lie. I don't see your little icon on the top here. Paragraph oh, we know sure if you're in the show notes. Yeah, we know. We know if you're in the show notes. But so yeah, for those that did not tune in on uh, episode ten, which you should definitely check out, once uh, we fixed a little issue with it being six minutes for some reason, I don't, I don't, I don't know why we apologize for that, but for it truncated the episode. Podcast. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it truncated from two hours to six minutes. I'm like, what the heck? So I, I think I know what to do. I gotta refresh. Uh, I think I gotta delete the item from the feed and then re-upload it so that. Uh, Stitcher will pick it up properly, but uh, you know Matt has some interesting um, work that he does when he's not uh, derailing podcasts. <laughs> he works over at Games VR <laughs> and uh, Guinness World Records, uh, so that's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah, it's a fun time. That's that, that's the hobby part of what I do freelance. I do a lot of trade magazines and a lot of more kind of technical stuff, but that's certainly the stuff that keeps me going. That uh, the creative juices. So, if you can find the book in your local bookstore, it's the Gamers Edition. Look for my mug at the back there, and uh, yeah. Hey, how many uh, years have you been doing it for? Uh, this will be my fourth. I just got uh, off the phone with them, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be doing a fourth book. So yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. What's that, Eeyore? Your... Send me a huh? what? <laughs> Send me a copy. Yeah. I don't. I don't have it. I gotta buy one for Yogi first. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. you had. I thought you had a whole stash of them like, hanging around. Now I feel. Oh. 
<laughs> no, I just haven't. I've honestly not left the house in like three days. I honestly feel like Matt I, doesn't even like us anymore. I, I know, Straight up, yeah, I, I can't even give us a freaking exactly. book. Come I don't on. Have books. I don't. You don't read? Don't, Is that what you're saying? I read, but I don't have extra copies of just my with book. pictures, I right? Well, the pictures are good. Let me. <laughs> you can look at my crotch while I look at the book. <laughs> I can't even find this year's book. Where I was going to say it? it, but I'm not okay, ready I'm on, to. I'm on page 98. <laughs> page 98? Stop it, Sean. <laughs> I still don't see. Well, I'm, I'm telling mess. you, mine look like a balding man, my notes. <laughs> well, are, are these notes serious? Do we actually have notes? Yeah, I've yeah. shared them with the, past, the last episode and this episode. I shared, I shared I, it today, though. This How is this is what that, happens. Like... This is what happens when we just get online and just go for it. I don't. I honestly do not know where these notes are. Did it's you email to your email? Google, Google Plus. Plus. Oh, yeah. I don't go on Google Plus. Well, then you're no, like, stupid. No, you just go to uh, <laughs> to doc, docs. Doc, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Docs.google.com. Docs.com. Docs.google.com. That's Google. I, Google Drive. Com. Just email me. Yeah, it should have emailed you on your uh, Gmail address. Why is Matt looking at the seat? Uh-huh. But anyway. I uh, lost something. Matt, that's what Matt does. <laughs> you know, and again, Sean is the, the master man, <laughs> mastermind of the Freeman Empire, the Freeman Kingdom. And then Normie, a lot of people don't know this. I just want to share this. She, she's a, a, a voice actor. She's known for her sultry parts in several video games, including Mass Effect. Absolutely. I should, have been, I should have been in League of Legends. Cause I can do. No, Annie. he's in League of Legends. What? No, she said she's a voice actor. I should. I should have been. I should have been Annie for League of Legends. Holy goddamn! No, look at these things. <laughs> Holy. That's what she said. I guess. <laughs> it's now look. Wow. Uh, if you dissect she it, did. we have sections. The first section is to welcome our guests, so they <sighs> understand the format of the show. Then a pre-show okay. discussion for our brainstorming sessions. Then All I'm saying and, is, and then a topic. Sean, and Matt, don't yeah. get any ideas because I am not going to be writing a novel like this every okay, so week. <laughs> Mine is short and simple. Not as good as real bacon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Sitting there yeah. answering the questions. <laughs> <laughs> you cheated. <laughs> so yeah, one of the questions I have to ask Matt is how does he feel about Canadian bacon? I don't. Is it called Canadian? It's called Canadian bacon, but is it ours? Because none of us eat that stuff. I know. I think it's, it's maple. It's a misnomer, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a huge misnomer. No one's eating like that. Ham. Everyone loves real bacon. See, and they, and they threw it your way to give you guys the crappy stuff. That's yeah, we got blamed for Canadian bacon. That's that's <laughs> bogus, man. What do you know? We have cow up there? Cow bacon? Sean always asks if like, we have stuff in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even oh, have cars, man. No, we, <laughs> we have moose. And then we eat our moose when we get to our destination. It's a very... Shoddy transportation system. Okay, I, I have moose. I, I do have one question, Yogi. Yeah, lay it on me. I'm on page 137. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you, buddy. I kid you. That wasn't a question. That was a statement. Are the strike through notes? Are we still doing those, or is that just? I just stuck them through. I figured we're gonna skip those. Oh, I thought <laughs> we were gonna do man crushes because I was gonna talk about my man crush. Well, that's yeah, what we I'm it. excited to hear about your man crush. That's the. I gotta tell you. About that's the branding you know. of our segment. Oh, okay. you guys have many questions you want to share? I mean, if you can... I've got yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch, not just because of his last name, but I, I'd love to go on a date with that man. Oh, Cumberbatch, that's man a, date. Oh, I know who that is. That's, that's uh, Sherlock, right? Sherlock, and uh, Khan in the new Star Trek movie, and Jack Bauer in Twenty Four. Keep for Sutherland? Sutherland? Well, or more like a character, Jack Bauer. Yeah, he was pretty good in Mirrors. Did you see Mirrors? No, oh, I saw mirrors. That's the one, not to be stupid, but it's the one with the mirrors where it's like the parallel universe. Yes, and that was an awesome people. twist. Awesome twist that just makes you really angry. The the stuff at the end was kind of cool. I actually liked what they did at the end, just for imagination sake. But the movie was kind of. Well, hey, I'm gonna ask you guys real quick then. <laughs> this is a good segue for that. <laughs> this is what's well, not really zombies, but it's horror, so it's kind of related. But how do you guys feel about? These three movies, I think they have some of the best uh, twists in horror. So Mirrors is one of them, uh, The Skeleton Key, and The Wicker Man. The, <laughs> the Wicker Man. Wicker Man, come on. Mouth farts to The Wicker Man. 
Dude, the worst movie ever. A like, dude in a bear costume punches women for ten minutes. That was dude. The Wicker Man has such a gruesome. <gasps> My favorites. Maybe the first one was good, but the one with Nicolas Cage was god awful. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. The way that ended, it, it, it gave me the heebie-jeebies. I was like, oh, that's messed up. I, I respect your opinion. I, I, you've got good taste, so I'll take your word for it. Maybe I was in a weird mood when I saw it, but Nicolas Cage and The Wicker Man would just didn't do it for me. Sean, you've seen The Wicker Man. I don't know. Nick Cage, that's, an, that's, that's plenty yeah. to said right there. Yeah, that's... that's a... Yeah. So, so no one else has it about the those damn... <laughs> I, I can't remember Skeleton Key, to be honest with you. I, I remember it was about, they were in what? They were in New Orleans. Yes, it was a good movie. Yeah, it was it was an atmospheric movie. I just can't remember what the, the twist was at the end. Oh, uh, the bad uh, guys win. Spoiler! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, well, basically, this, the big, the real twist. Oh, of, no, I'm good. This real twist about Skeleton Key wasn't just the bad guys won, but the fact that they would not have won if the skeptic did not turn into a believer, because the whole time the skeptic like was like, oh, I don't believe in magic, there's no such thing. And then all this stuff started happening, and she started believing in it, and then that's what they needed to make the magic work, the voodoo magic work. So that was like, whoa. So like, oof. Uh, Sinister has a pretty good twist, too. I'm going to bring it up a lot. Sinister is a movie that... Mar- okay, Sinister is the one with the, the found movies, right? Where he watches the found movies, and they're yes. like snuff films. That is that creeped me the crap out because of the the soundtrack to that movie, like the yeah, weird yeah. eclectic like kids screaming and stuff. But that's a movie that's the only movie Marianne will refuse to watch again or even discuss. Like not even on a joking basis. Like it got to her for some reason. I just got goosebumps as you talk about it because I think with horror, you know, yeah. whether it's zombies or vampires, whatever, you have to have good uh, good soundtrack. And when you have that minimalist soundtrack where it's just weird, yes. amb- ambiatic ambiance you know sound you know atmospheric yeah. sounds oh i looked up the soundtrack afterwards because it just it affected me so much and i don't know if freeman normie obi if you've seen sinister you're, you know what i'm talking about when he's watching the videos yep. there's this weird like it's not even music it's just like sounds set to like uh, i can't even describe it but it is an actual german band that does the soundtrack for that and hmm. i listen to some stuff and it's the same stuff so it's just let me just i'll look it up like same stuff in general, like with their music, or yeah, it's just F or up. just you know throughout the whole soundtrack. Yeah, it, no, it's just um, like like uh, Yogi said, it's very minimalist. But when it does kick in with the the quote unquote soundtrack, it's it's pretty haunting. Let me just ah, what was the name of it? Don't pause on behalf of me. Oh, all right, Oliver. <laughs> so here we'll, we'll we'll keep it moving along, and then uh, Matt could uh could uh, chime in with that yes. answer there. Oh, you got it. A G H A S T a gas. So if you want to creep yourself out tonight, go get a guest. Huh. Let me open it out. Yes, I like that. So all right, so let's yes. let's set up uh, the, the stage here for the zombie talk, so we can just jump right into it. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. We still got a, a ton of stuff to talk about on uh, Walking Dead. But um, so guys, usually on Zombie Cast, you ask your guests to give a definition of zombies, what zombies mean to them. All right. Right. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot and ask you guys what your definition is. Who should we start off with, Obi? Who who should we start off with first, Obi? Who do you think? (laughs) Spin the wheel. Zing. Normie. Cecilia. (laughs) Normie's video. Oh, see, I told you not to do me first. You win. I know. You didn't get dude first. (laughs) Eight to ten. Eight to ten. ten. All right, I'm in the scale. Eight to ten. (laughs) <laughs> lightweight. Um, okay. Lightweight. This, yeah. <laughs> That's yep. Anyways, so when I was asked this question when I was first on the show, I I see zombies as like you know from Resident Evil zombies, ones that mutated from a virus, and they're not just like you know people that turn like funky. There's like they just turn into like these crazy monster-looking things that are continuously mutating so that that is how i see a zombie not your typical romeo zombies it's like a virus zombie then correct you know like the t virus yeah exactly constant mutating zombie so in order for a zombie to be a zombie the origin has to be viral Mm Mm-hmm. i like you correct but you know and not just you know viral would just you know just like whatever's in the air is 
is combining, but something that was, you know, done in a lab with a more sinister kind of feel towards it. Mm. So that, 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 that brings us to that whole, uh, it's, it's a pretty old debate that's been going on, especially since uh, 28 Days Later, you know, infected versus zombie, like there's kind of a distinction there. But I don't think we'll get back into that, but that's interesting. Well, Matt Monk kind of shut the door on that and actually um, allowed there to be viral and um, the just return from the dead zombies. I can't remember his three rules, but they, they kind of encapsulate all the zombies. What was it, Sean? Do you remember, guys, Matt Moak said there's three things a zombie needs to be. Uh, I can find it. Keep talking. I yeah. Mean, I have it because I, I, uh, I, got, I got a form to that. Keep talking, fool. Yeah, yeah I remember the criteria. Uh, I remember hearing the criteria. I don't remember all the the items. Yeah. But uh, um, I, I think one of the things he said was that they can't be fast moving or something. They're... No, because he validated my choice, which are the uh, the 28 Days Later zombies, like the rage zombies. Mm-hmm. Like that's my that's my preferred type of zombie. A zombie to me is like a, the scarier, not, the scarier. Like these things aren't just gonna shamble at you. They're gonna full out run for you because they're hungry. They they want to eat you. They want to attack. They just want to devour everything in their path. They're like they're just a strain, like a virus on humanity that just like pours through and just decimates it. And that's me. When I see zombies like that in movies, that's when I get scared. The the slow zombies, I'm like. I'd, I'd like to think I'd be able to, like, avoid them and kill them. And the, the only thing about slow zombies, and Sean made this point, it's a smart point, is that it depends on you screwing up. Yeah. The zombies will only get you if you screw up and make bad decisions. And I'm going to tell you right now, you guys want to be with me, next to me, if we have a zombie apocalypse, because I will keep you. Well, no, you, you went quiet on that last part. You will what? Eat me alive? <laughs> you why would he want to be with you in a zombie apocalypse? Did you say yes or no to being with you? Because that sounds like a definite no situation of being with Obi in a zombie apocalypse. Keep. No, he said he'll keep, keep you alive. Here. Oh, keep. Oh, all, right. all right. What I want you to do. I'm going to drive in a big oval yeah, track for like 10 hours. That's, that's really mean. Avoid the zombies. You know what? <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, there's possible Your bands going movement. out. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna turn left to get rid of no. the zombies? Right turn, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Anyway, yeah. What? So Matt, was that your definition that uh, uh, you like the? And that's how you do true zombies. Yeah, absolutely. The twenty days later to me is the true zombie. Well, it's two different. Okay, that's two different questions. Um, what I prefer are the twenty eight days later zombies for an entertainment zombie. That's that's a zombie I like to see. Um, when I think what an actual zombie is, I tend to skew classic. I tend to skew for the um, the things that rise from the dead. Um, so what I think are the genuine, like, honest goodness zombies are those. But what I want and I love watching are the fast zombies. So take that as you will. How do you feel about uh, I Am Legend? Those... I don't think those are zombies. Interesting. No, those Why? are those... Because they're super intelligent? <clears throat> Well, no, I think it establishes in the movie and the books that those are just evolutions of mankind. And they're they're animals. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, but I am. But I am legend. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. you heard that. <laughs> Sorry. But I am I legend came car. down to where they actually just watched the movie the other day. They actually made yeah. it to where they were actually making the viewers believe that the zombies could actually think and actually get smarter. Right. That's not what a zombie is to me, but I'll get to my. Well, you know who the legend in that movie was? It was Will Smith. Yeah. Yes. He was. He was the only. He, he was, was the, the one. He was, he was, he was the one the that was. Well, he was the one that right, was. Had... Um, he had the blood. Uh, yes, yeah. there's a word for it. I'm thinking about but it. But he was also the monster because he was the one. He like... had the immunity. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what the whole movie is about: is that humanity has changed. Will Smith is a monster going out, capturing them, dissecting them, and experimenting them. They're doing nothing. They're they're living their own lives now as as a as new type of monster. But Will Smith is the legend that keeps coming out at night and capturing them and bringing them back to his lap. That's the whole point of that. Yeah, and to them, he's the monster. Yeah. So, so I have Nobody's the paper here. Like, yeah, whatever, but I can drink my Ewer mug right now. <laughs> so, so I have the paper here. They sent me. Uh, they sent yeah. me some swag today, and I've got a, a thing that I've got to frame. It's actually got his autograph at the bottom because he signs uh, each document for the Zombie Research Society. 
But uh, but the three fundamental fundamental principles of zombies is one: a zombie is a relentless, aggressive human, a reanimated human corpse driven by biological infection. Two: the zombie pandemic is coming. It if it if uh, it's not a matter if it's a matter when. And three you. enthusiastic debates about the zombies is is essential to the survival of the human race. But uh, a zombie is a relentless, aggressive human, a reanimated human corpse driven by bi biological infection. So you know, kind of his that reanim Yeah, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I just can't see when you're about to talk because I'm all, I'm just staring at a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you gotta give like a ding or something like that. You gotta get like a bell like John. Ding. I think the part that trips <laughs> me up is uh, reanimated corpse, because what does that mean? To me, I think the rage zombie still works because I, I believe in my mind that the virus goes in and just erases what was there and reprograms it. So to me, that's a human corpse reanimated. So I think it still falls within that. We have a feature already? No, wait, we're, we're still uh, in the. No, uh, geek girls and back crushes. Okay, don't talk about this too much because I got some cool ass intro music for this segment. So don't, don't rain uh, on well, my parade, I, Matt. What the heck? Again? But I do. Ah! Has anybody given, I haven't given my definition yet. Yeah, right. Sean, it's Sean's turn now. I'm just messing. Lay down us. <laughs> my definition of a zombie is kind of like the Romero zombie. It's uh, the thrive. For a zombie to eat, and, and you know, as a human, a zombie, you know, you just fear the nick of the tooth. So it, it's it's straight up the Walking Dead, I guess, is, is my definition of a zombie. You know, Romero nailed it, but smart zombies, I'm not so much for. But uh, I, I think 100, the Walking Dead is, is my definition of a zombie. Yeah. You know, and that's all they do—they fear the nick of that tooth. You know, one bite. One scratch of the tooth, you're infected. Is it though? I always wondered, and I, sorry, Obi, we might be getting into a bit of the feature right now, but <laughs> I always wondered what happens when you get zombie blood on you, because the tooth isn't like some magical like ejection needle. Right. Like you see in Walking Dead, people are getting covered in blood all the time. So wouldn't they like be instantly afraid if they had blood splatter on their face and they swallowed it? Yeah, if they it have seems uh, like it. An open sore, or if they swallow, yeah. Also, the teeth, the biting. I think um, actually have an article up on our on our on our site, uh, Geeky Antics, and we and it's actually a reblog from another site called a Zombie Blog, and I and I put my own thoughts on it. But they talk about the different types of uh, zombie attacks. Now, biting is actually not so scary if you think about it, because if they don't pierce the skin, then you technically you wouldn't get infected. But then again, there's a whole other aspect where if you're already infected and it's a matter of you don't want to die because then you come back as a undead, that's a whole other ball game. But biting, well, I mean, you know, there's only been so many movies and, or shows where they're smart and they put like something like really thick leather coats or magazines around their arms like they did in um, World War Z. Or duct, duct tape. Or duct tape. I mean, duct tape fixes everything. So he would oh, think. Absolutely. What about the fact that in The Walking Dead, it technically is a virus that's within everybody? Wouldn't that make it not a zombie? Wouldn't that just make it? I think it still is a zombie. The thing <clears throat> is, um, it's dormant within them until they die. But the only difference yeah. is in the, the Walking Dead, you're more scared about dying because you don't want to come back as that crap. Yeah. So now, you know, you, you, in that scenario, you're more worried about what's a, a mortal wound, you know? Or what will accelerate? You wouldn't want the red eyes. <laughs> That's a good question. I never asked. Fashionable. Yeah, the red eyes are pretty fashionable. But, so, yeah, who who was that? Uh, Big Tiny, Theodore Crane. Remember the prison gang? He got stabbed in the shoulder with the. Remember an arm had ripped off or something, and he got stabbed with the bone. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. That's right. One second. But we have a couple of questions in the in the <clears throat> chat real quick. But, uh, what what <laughs> okay. did they say? I missed it. But, uh, oh, okay, well, this is the question right here. As Modius says, why don't the Walking Dead zombies decompose entirely? So we'll get into that in, in the next segment because we're going to get deep into the Walking Dead. Uh, he had another question. <laughs> Freeman. What, what did I <laughs> What did I miss? So, Sean, is that is that your whole, uh, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> is that your whole, <laughs> whole definition, Sean? Well, yeah, per, chat. yeah per, 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm a fan of the grave diggers, but you know that's not in my definition. You know, it's just like an infection that uh, thrives the dead to to reanimate and, and just feed for hunger. Even though you know, a lot of times w- when it comes to zombies and definitions, and Mr. Matt Moak from Zombie Research Society, you know, talks about this. You know, he's in research and all from history's past. But, you know, a lot of times people laugh at people preparing for the zombie apocalypse or, or their definition of a zombie, what is a zombie? But then, you know, it, you've got things like the Black Plague, which took out one-third of Europe. I mean, you know, it, it killed millions and millions of people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, whether it be the cliche of zombie prep, but, you know, the preparation, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things out there, you know, when it comes to a definition of a zombie, whether it's a tornado tears your town up, or like, yeah, you know, I mean, like the Black Plague, you know. So I, I think the, my definition of a zombie, realistically, you know, it could be uh, be a lot of things. I think there's a lot of bad infections out there that could uh, destroy the world. Which would be worse, Yogi? What's to that? have, which would be worse to have an invisible infection like the Black Plague that you just catch and die? within a couple of days or, or uh, uh, like the walking dead zombie infection what do you think i mean would you rather have zombies or relive something that has happened like the black plague i mean obviously when there's a chance of survival and it's a visible threat i think i'd rather have that than wait than have all my fate on in someone else's hands you know waiting for them to you know synthesize a you know a, a cure or whatever so yeah, I'd rather have the zombies. Though psychologically, obviously, zombies is worse. But you know, you get you get a pandemic where you know a disease spreads, and there's no cure for it. That that would suck. What was that movie that came out? It, it was a couple of years ago. Toward the, the the lady cheated. I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow. Maybe cheated on her husband, and she got some infection, and it went viral. And people oh, every movie she's in. A contagion, wasn't it? Yeah. Contagion. That's it. You know, and, and, you know that that could be the cliche of, of the apocalypse. You know, yeah. Stuff like that could happen. Well, it before we get happened. before Black we get Black. right before we get too deep into this, I do want to get this the the intro done and everything. And I know you guys want to talk about it because I do too. But I don't want to get. I have, we have a couple more questions actually in chat, and I want to wait till we start the segment. So, without further ado, last week week ten we did kick off the uh, zombie talk series. And um, we just didn't get enough talked about. So we're instead, we're going to jump right back into it right now. We'll be right back with this zombie talk in 30 seconds. Get everybody a little bit excited and get some horror music in there. Welcome to Horseplay once again. This is Zombie Talk Time. We just started this last week, and we're going to finish it. And hell, we might not even finish it this week. We might need to have him come back another week. As Matt goes, no. (laughs) No, I'm saying we won't finish it. We won't finish it. (laughs) Well, like we were talking about last week, feature of the day, without... Further ado, let's talk about The Walking Dead. We're I did get a chance. Right? Um, I'm on 768 right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am way so behind. Fast. Um, I did do want to say that I did get a chance to catch up on The Walking Dead. Not entirely because I'm missing a couple of the they didn't record on my DVR, but for the most part been pissing my wife off lately because all I do is sit on my cell phone with my earphones and watch Walking Dead on on, uh... on a cell phone. It's tr- yes. Oh man, that's not the experience. Seems that's like the a... only way I, I could catch up, man. I don't have time to sit down so... for a couple hours at a time to watch two. Hours. I don't. Have... Just have it busy, in a corner busy, busy. Your t- 
I know, but just you got to like maybe on your computer while you're working. I don't know what you do. Maybe a NASCAR driver. You can have like a laptop on your passenger seat. I'm going to mute this noob. <laughs> anyway, NASCAR driver. God. Okay. Reason being that, guys, if you guys are just joining with us or you just if you're listening and you're just hitting in. Left turn. Yeah, left turn. <laughs> I was talking about in pre and in pre show, and I was just like, "Hey, did you guys watch Daytona?" So <laughs> I don't watch. I'm not religious NASCAR fan. I'm not drinking beer and watching NASCAR. No, I ain't like I that. I grew up on the little NASCAR ride in Disney World once. So. I think Does paint drawing was on that night. I caught that instead. <laughs> Sorry, Ob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did Go watch. Ahead. I did watch the end of it after Knuckleball Radio the other night. I think there was ten laps left. And and, and, I, I, and said, I did watch this. I, I actually got to see, believe it or not, forty left turns. Well, it was the water boiling season premiere too, so that came right after paint drying. You only seen forty left turns. So in <laughs> Daytona, they actually have a fifth. Oh, so, oh, so Oops. fifty. I saw fifty left turns. <laughs> Poor Obi. <laughs> Oh, We're gonna my. break him. We're gonna break him. <laughs> hey, Obi, I want to ask you one thing. Have sure. you ever been to a NASCAR race like me? I'm from North Carolina, so we, we have Charlotte Motor Speedway. You couldn't tell. I got Rock Michigan Motor Speedway here. here. But uh, yeah, you know, I've been to Charlotte a couple of times, and I gotta say, you know, NASCAR, the whole cliche thing. I'm not a a fan, but whenever you go to a NASCAR race, it's amazing seeing how fast 200 miles an hour is. I mean, whenever that you can't even see the cars when they get by you. I mean, it's, it's nuts actually seeing this in person. I mean, you would swear that they had jets and rockets attached to these things, shooting them across the track. Am, am I right? Yeah. Have you ever been, uh, I Obi? I have been. Yes. Very fun. Yep. A lot of fun. But what we are going to do is we are going to get back into The Walking Dead because I cut these guys off here a few minutes ago. Because I didn't want to get too deep into it because I had the cool music. So what we are going to do is we're going to get right back into it right now. And being the newbie in Walking Dead, um, my perspective is, okay, I need the guy's names again. Okay, The, the husband that came back okay, is Rick. Car- is Rick okay? Rick. Carl is the, the kid, the boy. The Sean kid. is the douchebag friend. Um, Shane. Shane right. is the douchebag friend, and who's yeah, the Sean. crazy? Who's the? Who's the? <laughs> is that a, a Freudian slip right there or something? <laughs> no, I did that on purpose. Actually, I was just look, I was looking at that T-shirt again, so it's like yeah. you know. Um, and then who's the crazy dude? Rick. Shane. No. No. Rick. The governor. Which governor. One? The governor. governor. Rick. No. The governor's the crazy. One. Um. The, Rick's the the, uh, the guy show. the guy's brother that they left in the city. Oh. Um, Daryl. Oh, yeah. Daryl, I am officially Team Daryl. He is a crazy no, son of a bitch that will fucking shoot you in the head no. and don't care. Yes. Wait, no. Merle. Merle is the guy you're talking oh, about. Yes, you will shoot Merle. Baby. Merle is the guy that yeah. got left. I like Daryl, the guy that freaking carries a freaking cross, bro, and says, "I don't give oh, a dude, damn. I'm I'll on shoot you in the face." Everyone's okay? on his team. Okay. Everyone's on Team. Daryl. Shane's a yeah. fucking douchebag. I can't Thank stand you. that son of a bitch. Sorry guys, Thank I'm you. I'm swearing up a storm. I'm glad we're not on iHeartRadio. No. You know, but you know, we, we, we just saw that Matt saw it at nighttime, but we saw that rooftop you know, where they filmed all that stuff. That was cool. Uh, me and Matt uh, were in the West in Atlanta. And we, I was like on the 50th floor, 49th floor, and right, right beside the hotel where we were staying, you could look down and see the rooftop to where they filmed all The Walking Dead. It was, it was kind of neat to see. But it's just cool, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but we'll we'll get into it right now. But um, Yogi, I'm gonna let you kind of lead this because I am the newbie in this. In this, so you're gonna you do your thing. Um, I know you got a bunch of points that you want to make sure that you point out. So, Yogi, take it away. All right. So, spo- spoiler alert. So, if it, you know if anyone's listening and they don't want any spoilers, you may want to skip the next 30, 40 minutes, <laughs> give or take. <laughs> yeah. Plug in the ears. We're gonna focus particularly on on uh, season four. 4.5, as I like to call it, episodes 9 through 11. Uh, but I think we'll, we'll also go back to some of the older stuff and the, the best moments to date. But uh, you mentioned Daryl, and uh, there's an interesting thing, a little bit of uh, speculation going around. You know, there's going to be, they confirmed there's going to be a Daryl-only episode. 
And yeah. some people are saying that <laughs> it might be a setup for him or Beth to die. <gasps> no, Beth Beth will die before Daryl. They're not. Uh, they're never gonna I kill Daryl. So. Yeah. Be revolt. Yeah. He's but imagine, untouchable. imagine. It, I, see, we said this last last time on episode uh ten. You know, he's untouchable. But imagine if they just went completely, you know, Josh Whedon and just said, "We're gonna kill off a, a very important character." Boom. Done. Yeah. When they kill Rick. No, that would Ooh, be that would, no. that would take out the framework of the show, but. Daryl could go. He doesn't exist in the comics, and he was created just for the show. Yeah. Sorry, my, my cat's getting but, really close. I know, dude. I'm watching that. That's like a tender it's moment. It's really right weird. I'm going to make sure I <laughs> highlight just that, and I'm going to put I that on. I saw that. The cat like... was, was caressing his lip. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, pretty so bird. Cute. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. But What's his know, name? Wink. <laughs> hey... I think SG is in chat. Hey, SG. Hey, SG. Oh, Junk. Oh, what's up? All right. We do have one question that I want to get to real quick. Yogi, I know oh, you're... Yeah. What? Yeah, I was just going to say it. Uh, go ahead. Um, we had a question in chat earlier, and I wanted to say it now. And this is for, this is for everybody to give their two cents in. Um, where did it go? Okay, yes. I'll put okay. it I <laughs> why don't the Walking Dead zombies decompose entirely or become very ah. sick? There's the question. Well, first of all, it'll break the show on a purely technical basis. Having the zombies decompose will break the show. Like, what's the timeline we're in now? Like, how long has it been since the first episode? Are we talking a year and a half? Oh, um, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, two, like two and a half. Two, was it two winters? I mean, the little girl is not old enough to walk on her own, and Lori was before Lori was even pregnant. So we know that at least nine months and a year have gone by. So and technically, and they spent six months in the prison as well. Yeah, because we jumped ahead a lot. Big mistake the for there. Again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So what do you think? What do you think uh, on that, Matt? I don't know. I, I, what do you guys say? I, personally, I think they should be decomposing hardcore, and I think it re they reflect that in some episodes. You see that. A lot of them, like, are just basically walking skeletons. But then you got people with, well, no, okay, well, that's the answer right there. People are getting turned every day, so you're going to have a lot of fresh-faced zombies. For all we know, there could be a ton of decomposing zombies that have already passed. This is like Yeah, but you never, generation. ever see them, though. Never, ever see them in any episode. You don't see, I mean, you see them where they're like, you know, yeah, if it's been a, in a, a group point. or something, or they I'm... just ate or whatever. You never, ever see a decomposed zombie just walking around half, you know. Oh. Skin Bicycle Girl in the first episode was pretty decomposed, just mm. lying there on the grass. I don't know. They go both ways. Like you never. The one he sorry, came back and shot in the head. <clears throat> yeah. It, that's because she had half a body. Well, that doesn't mean her face goes too. Like she looked pretty worse for wear. Yeah. But it's almost like it's they usually. Bad. She could have looked like that in real life. Okay. <laughs> she could have been having a Poor bad girl. day. She didn't put her fucking makeup on. <laughs> That, is that was her Monday first day. mistake. That was <laughs> Normie. <laughs> Put your makeup on in the zombie apocalypse. Normie. Maybe first maybe right thing though. you do. Psh, that would be me. They do rarely show like a really decomposed zombie, so I'm maybe I'm apologizing for the show, but I'd I'd like to think that it is because we're seeing a lot of freshly turned people. Right. What I, do you think? I then? think so. And I think the virus would be very slow mutating as well. As far as once they get into that, into that, you know what I mean? Because it takes them a while to kind of turn. But I think the just logic doesn't really exist with these beings, considering that the only way to really kill them is to just, you know, directly what hit the hippocampus, whatever direct spot in the brain that they need, <laughs> or smush them through a fence. Um, up here. Right. You know, well, just, it, you know. there was a point made earlier too with I think Matt and and Sean, you guys were talking about it with if. You know, if you get a whole bunch of zombie blood on you, aren't they worried about getting sick or getting the virus or nothing? I don't think that's going to be a very, that would be a, a very good way to be able to get it. Um, mm -hmm. Just because with any zombie movie or anything, the zombie actually has to bite you or scratch you. There's never been nothing about zombie blood gets on you, you're going get, to get infected. Yeah. Unless well, you have an open fire. sore. Um, the... I was thinking of the open source. 
the um I think it was a different it was in one of the Resident Evil movies where the guy had an open sore on his chest and then he got zombie blood on him. Or, you know, some kind of blood and it got into his sore and all anyway. Not gonna yeah. get into that right now. <laughs> yes. Freeman, do you have any uh two cents worth in that uh question? No, I, I, I totally agree with everything that you said. It's just kind of a hard question, you know, when it, when it comes to just a, the Hollywood aspect of making, you know, making the show. It has to, you know, you got to make it where it works. Right. Well, and what we're going to do, guys, for those that are asking questions, we really do appreciate the questions, but we are going to leave the questions um, till the end. So then we can just get through this feature. We can talk about what we can talk about. And then right before these guys jump off or have to go, We'll open open the you know the chat to questions and as many questions as you want. And of course, I have kind of a, a monkey wrench that I'm going to be throwing in today. Who nobody, not even Yogi I knows. Be your monkey it's not in the notes. No, it's not actually. <laughs> if I control F monkey wrench, I won't find it. Nope. <laughs> nope. So that being said, Yogi has Daryl gone derp. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's the big question. Uh, D- Daryl's kind of gone. He looks like he's going down a path of Rick. He's becoming kind of. Uh, I think he's doubting himself, and the next thing he's going to be like a blubbering, crying mess. You know, <laughs> I'm worried about him. I, I it, it, it seems like you know I know episode nine. He's gonna be like the old and, guy. Was it episode nine? No, episode ten really showed him a lot. But uh, basically, that where they have shown him. You know, Beth and Daryl together, it looks like uh, Daryl is really, like, doubting himself a lot. He's losing kind of hope. I, I, I feel like they're, they're kind of setting... That's why I'm worried that if he, he's going to have his own episode. They might be ki- setting it up to kill him. I don't know. But he's, he seems like he's having doubts. And maybe Beth... Not, suddenly, Beth is the chipper person. The person that was, like, suicidal not too long ago. All of a sudden, yeah. she's, like, the one that's trying to encourage him. So it's an interesting... I think it's an interesting dynamic there. So I don't know. You guys think he's going derp or he's just... Having a low phase, you think he's gonna get out of the funk or, or what? I don't know. From what I got from the last episode that they were together, you know, she did have this positive outlook, and he pretty much said, "Nope, everything you know, any kind of faith that you had really doesn't exist." So it seemed like almost he's putting the doubt in her again. Ooh, so, yeah. You know, if I think if they continue this way, they're gonna get messy because at this point, you know, if you have no hope, you really have no reason to live. So. I, I honestly think that, you know, Beth is going to probably be the next one to go. Yeah, Plus, you know, she was never in really any big battle scenes before. So it's not, you know, I'm I'm impressed with the stuff that she is doing because, you know, she was pretty much contained in the um, in the prison for most of the time. So but her skills, we... I'm, I'm assuming, are not that great. Well, can any of us name one pivotal moment in The Walking Dead that involved Beth? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like Exactly. She's an emotional. I mean, emotionally, she's attached to Maggie, and Maggie's lost so much, so we feel bad for Maggie. But if if Beth were to go, I'd kind of be like, uh, she was kind of cute, but <laughs> in terms of her utility to the show, not so much. Yeah, just a little cute. She didn't have any utility. To- just a little. No, she doesn't. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, she she just serves to be like something to lose. I think she's just an extra character that they can afford to lose. In my mind, she's a great actress. I'm not talking about her. Wait acting a minute. Wait a minute. Now, our 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 yeah, our. I'm RN because Obi keep Yogi freaking flip flopping the questions around and different <laughs> valid. And I'm telling everybody what he's doing. And I hope you guys listen to this. <laughs> Those that are listening part. and watching it, yes, I'm looking at the show notes, which are right next to. <laughs> she's got a note. What's Normie saying? <laughs> That's her show notes. Um, I'm looking at the what show. The- <laughs> Which are right meow. next to you. Aww, look, wait. <laughs> She's saying meow. <laughs> now, we are, we already went over. Yeah, Yogi, I'm I'm lost again. Oh, there you are. Well, I, I moved I moved the stuff up because we already discussed this other stuff. Right now, okay. But I... Now wait a minute. Now, are Daryl and Beth going the wrong way on the tracks? Yeah, are they going the wrong way about this? Hmm. Free yeah, I don't know, I'm not a track. I, I, I probably would stay so, on the tracks also. So, so, but, but listen, this is a spoiler. This is kind of a spoiler. If you guys notice, they're going the opposite direction. Again, spoiler. They're going the opposite direction on the tracks from where everyone else has gone. They're going in a different direction. 
I and I had to rewatch it a few times. I think they are going the wrong direction. So I don't think they're going to end up in uh, Terminus, the Sanctuary, whatever you want to call it. So, well, Sean and I have a little insight from when we went to um, went on a tour of the set. Remember, Sean? Yes. Oh. Yes, yes. So a little a little spoiler. I think I think we can talk about this because it's getting close. But obviously, spoiler: one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. No, no, it's it's not that big. Of, don't punch me. Don't punch me. It's not that big of a spoiler. <laughs> what what we were told by an unnamed source is that don't punch me. Daryl and whoever he's with are gonna hook up with a militia of some sort. Ah, that was one of my predictions, remember? I called that. Yeah, 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 because I told you. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, exactly. Great, I don't have By to way, watch thanks. the damn show anymore. Thanks, man, that's awesome. That, that was a source, that was a source. Source, you just told me it was right because you've been at the set. Well, Do I'm... you watch the show with anybody else, I'm Obi? so mad right now. I'm going go, I'm gonna, like I'm gonna go, to go, I'm gonna go spoiler my wife now. <laughs> so that's it, you Guess like, what, no, baby? I have this this idea that maybe um, Daryl is gonna maybe hook up with some militia, but that's only a gut feeling. I don't know. <laughs> and you could surprise her and be like, "You're so amazing!" Yeah, I'm gonna there watch you go. the show every day. Dude, I so got her. Like... It was like episode six, okay, and I had already watched it, and I was, you know, because I went like one to ten all at once. I spent like four hours and went one to ten, and and. She was watching it, and I was like, "I'm already at ten, or I'm at I'm at six, or five, or whatever." So we watched five, and then we watched six. I said, "Man, I think, I bet this is gonna happen," and it happened. And she's like, "Dude, oh my god, are you sure you didn't watch these?" <laughs> I swear, baby, I didn't watch nothing. And then in seven, I'm a prophet, baby, I'm and a prophet. exactly, and then seven when they got out of that, um, was it six or seven when they got out of the uh, CDC? The yes. uh, okay. When I was like, man, I th I think they're gonna get out just in time, and then the thing's gonna blow up, and and then she sits there, and the, right as they're running outside, and they fall underneath the sand or in front of the sandbags, and the thing blows up. She goes, "You've been watching this." I'm like, "I swear, God, I haven't watched." Them. <laughs> I haven't. Now, I, you know, I'm at God, like God, gift. thirty or you know, total, I think thirty-eight, whatever. Yeah. Um, and she's still at like ten, so, and I'm just telling her that I haven't watched any. <laughs> So, so I'm just gonna get, <laughs> do off the whole movie, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It senses like they're gonna yeah. they're gonna go for like some kind of safe haven. I don't <laughs> think this prison's gonna last, guys. I don't. <laughs> okay, this next this next part, and I'm picking my nose right on stream for those that are not watching. Yes, I was picking my. Um, <laughs> but... to table this for Sean. Yes, okay. Sean. Oh no, Sean. Yeah, let, this let is Sean on this it. is this is your baby right here. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> In the zombie apocalypse, hope or nuisance? Ooh, put Sean, him on the spot. This is your baby. Sean, I want you to answer that question while staring at my child. Oh, <laughs> that's unfair. <laughs> that's really bad, dude. And I'm gonna answer that. I'm gonna answer for before him, and I'll just give him. He can elaborate. I'm gonna say nuisance. What are they gonna do? Where? Crawl. Where? Where? I'm gonna bite you with my teeth. Where? Wait, I don't have any teeth. I, oh. I don't know oh, you anything about guys. interview with the vampire, but Claudia was quite oh, the vampire. Look at that little guy. Oh, now it's now it's a camera. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Don, what do you say there, sir? You really think that's the nuisance, Obi? Yep. I think, Sean, I if think he was Sean a, would, I hey, break. I'm telling you right now, and I'm gonna get a good picture of him. I'm gonna get a really cute. But you got Sean, do your thing. I want to know. Do you think babies in zombie apocalypse would be hope, which I don't really understand that, but or a nuisance? Uh, Yogi and I can speak to that. I think we're on the same page. That's a good. Yeah, question. I, 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 yeah, we 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 beat this to to death. Uh, during the, I think the last couple episodes of Zombie Cast, I was in the chat agreeing with you, because you know I think it's it's hope. Uh, you know you got to think. It, it really, t it's not just about survival. Everybody gets stuck on the, the ass kicking mm. and uh, the slaughtering of zombies. But if you don't start thinking about like getting back to normal Aww. lifestyle, Aww. he looks innocent. So I know he's evil, actually. <laughs> but, he's my kid. Wait, put... But listen, but listen, but listen. Yeah, I, you got to start thinking like you know, get into the mindset of of uh, repopulating the earth, you know, and and getting back to no a normal lifestyle. So if you don't have that hope, 
some kind of like you know normalcy, some kind of hope alive. Hey. You might as well just give up right away. What's the point? If you, just... you gotta ask yourself, why are you surviving if it's just to kill children? I don't. <laughs> I don't think that's it. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. I think bringing children is a whole another Pandora's box because now you have to worry about feeding another mouth, doing mm. the diaper thing. Not only that, but children are naturally curious. So, you know, I my mom has always told me and it's so true, if the kid is quiet, go check what they're doing because that kid is getting into trouble. And sure enough, every time it got eerily quiet, my son was up to doing something that was not safe. So I think that brings um, a whole nother um, level to survival because now, you know, you have to protect them from these, these evils that just, <laughs> you did, that can't think. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but I think that's, you know, that's just a whole nother thing. And then, you know, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, Freeman, you know, and then you have to worry about the crying as well. You know, you cannot reason with a child you know, until they're to a certain age. And even at certain ages, there's only so much information can give them for them to understand, to reason with. So I think children are, you know, a harder thing to do. I think once you get rid of the zombie scenario and that's out of the way, you know, you could be 70, then you can start repopulating the earth. But, you know, I don't think kids is a, is a good idea. That's the fun Yeah, part. but... But you're not gonna go to the extreme of like killing a baby or smothering it or something. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. No, that I wouldn't do. But you know, you gotta take some precautions. No, right, yeah. be smart. All right, on this. Side. I think no Sean's baby. dead. First of all, um, I'm, I'm alive. Sean. I am alive. I, I'm you digging your phone like five times, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's been digging it up. Um, Norma makes a lot of good points, but I think the clarifying question is: babies are a nuisance, but they're essential. I think babies are a nuisance, but they're a nuisance that you have to put up with because if you're not allowing babies into this world, why are you living it? And I'm not saying that's the only purpose for human life, but yeah, if you're well, not trying to keep human beings going and, and repopulate, then what, what's the purpose of why, why don't you just throw yourself to the zombie horde? Yeah. Right. Well, but right now, I mean, at this point yeah, in time, even in, even in The Walking Dead as, we're, as we see it right now, there would be no point even though it happens, there would be no point in having a baby and bringing it into that because then guess what? Just like Normie said, you have to watch out for it now. You have to, now when you're supposed to be quiet because there's a, what is a group of zombies? What do they call them? A herd? Yeah, a herd. Yeah, a herd. When, they, when they see a Zombie. herd of zombies and then they have to be quiet like in what, uh, episode eight when they were all underneath the cars? I'm sorry, episode, mm -hmm. yeah, eight, right? there. Almost every episode. Much well, it, it was uh, <laughs> it was the episode where the little girl ran into the woods, and the two zombies yes. were chasing her through the woods, where she, she got lost for like three oh, days or whatever. Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but like that, when the, when you need to be quiet, just to let that herd pass, and then you got a little, even all the way to a two year old. Yeah. No. That, you know? No. You make, you make a good point. I mean, it, right now in their life, right now, bringing a baby isn't good. If you have a baby, though. That it exists, whether unprotected sex or whatever, I guess that's the only way it would happen. Um, <laughs> then <laughs> immaculate conception. Then maybe what's what's your answer then? Do you do you get rid of the baby? Do you make a tough decision? Be like we got to abandon this baby because it's going to jeopardize the group, or that's now, a tougher choice. Now, okay, now, and you guys got to know, and I, and I'll explain myself if I need to. But the way I think, if I'm in that situation, and you guys got to think this, too, if you're in that situation, okay. It's a zombie mm -hmm. apocalypse. You don't have, I mean, you have the few cars that you can get a hold of, the few pieces of ammo, <laughs> the clothes that you have to live in for months or years at a time because, you know, you only get one hot shower every other day uh, or yeah. every other year. Um, would you, you'd have to ask yourself now, if I screwed up, of course, I'm going to be trying to get some, too. I don't give a damn. It's apocalypse, but I'm still human. I'm still a dude, okay? <laughs> yeah. You when that shower, China. When that, yeah, I might trip and fall. Damn. If it does happen, now, you might be somebody different that I could never do that because that's my child. Now, me, myself, and I, all three of us, yeah. 
We would we we would contemplate it. Um, it would be contemplated because you got to think about it. Do you want to be potentially wronged? I mean, or do you want to have your child? If it happened, uh, if it were me yeah. and it was my decision, no. As soon as it comes out, it's gone. no, no question, no question. Ah. I'm protecting that kid with my life. Sorry, I. Yeah, me too. Uh, At was, that point, I couldn't do it because. Because then that, but to then, me, totally defeats the purpose of life and death. You know what I mean? Like, in a zombie apocalypse, you're protecting life, whether it be your own or somebody else's. You're still protecting a life. So at that point, that in my mind is the whole point of survival. Because well, then you got to extend that argument. Are you going to are you gonna throw mentally handicapped people under the bus? Are yep. you going to throw people who can't walk the under elderly. the bus? The elderly. Yep. Then at what point do you stop becoming human and you just become an animal like the zombies? And what's the value of humanity at that point? I already am one. So it really doesn't <laughs> matter. But you'll lose your – what makes you unique is, is your protection of the human species. That's what makes us unique is wanting to protect the human species. We lose that and just – Me and you are going to have to talk some time off. Not in the same room, I hope. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> we have to talk offline sometime. But yeah, it, it's talk. not not that I'm a I'm just a <clears throat> selfish no, know, bastard right. or it's anything. But it's, it's a very it's something position. that could. I mean, it, what I mean, what if? I mean, you can what if every anything you want to death. But what if that happened? Now you could put it on that person, those people. Now if me and the whoever I got with, we did that and we had. You know, got pregnant or had a kid, you know, we're the dumbasses for doing it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to blame it on, you're going to let the kid take that punishment, though, for your mistake. It, Like I said, it would be a situational. Oh, well, now a we're situation. getting to a whole, like. Well, no, yeah. you got to, no, no, hold on. Yeah. With what you guys have said, I, I understand that, you know, preserving life, it would be our fault if it did happen. If it did happen, it would be a situational, I mean, how many people are in the group? Is it just us two? Is If it's the group that is in The Walking, you know, the the main cast of The Walking Dead, then yes, I would have, we'd have more than just two or three people to look after the baby. Um, I mean, yes, that is new life. Yes, that's what we're trying to accomplish, but I would have to make myself very, very clear that it would be, you know, if you're going to do it, I don't give a damn if you need to pull out in two seconds because you're a two-pump chump. Pull the fuck out. Don't right. have a kid. You don't gotta do, do it. You got to do what you yeah. got to do. That I, I understand agree with. people want to have <laughs> sex and people want to do that stuff because, of course, what right mind yeah. unless you're, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I mean, we're not – let's get off. I'm going to sidetrack us anyway because we could talk about it forever. <laughs> it's a heavy debate, and it, it spills over into real-world debates. My um, final answer I, I, would be I really wouldn't know really what I would do. Until it'd be situational. Yep. I mean, if the yep. baby came out and it was healthy per ten, ten fingers, ten toes, of course I would try to try to make sure I could keep it safe. But if it's already yep. half, you know, you got to remember, too, all the other different possible defects. that Half have. zombie, half human? No, well, not it's even that. Baby. Not even that, but, like, <laughs> um, you know, a child that comes out with, uh, you know, in real life, real life, mm -hmm. uh, like now, like it comes out Down syndrome, or it comes out. You know, you have to. Those are the situations that you would have to put under advisement of what. You know, do we want to? You know, try this if it. it you know, because we you can only you can't. Right, let's talk about this. Something. It's tough. It's tough. No, it's. I, I really don't know. <laughs> I know what yeah. I would do, man. It's just. I don't think anyone does. We can all talk tough right now, and I can talk like okay altruistic i'd save the baby no matter what but well know, we need to get yogi involved because yeah. he's uh, he's sitting there and i can yeah. see through his 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 screen glasses he's falling asleep <laughs> so we need to get him talking yogi what would you I do got... you've I you've got... slipped and fallen into a vagina uh <laughs> accidentally <laughs> nutted all up in her what would you happen <laughs> you what accidentally you fell in there <laughs> what is this like the size of a football field or something well you know how know, women you win when you're how do you accidentally Atlanta. fall in there? there? Yeah, but you know how you know how this saying goes when a woman, you know, when uh, when you know you cheat on your your husband, you know the the husband says, "What do you actually trip and fall on his dick?" I accidentally fell on a rod. Sorry, honey. That's the same thing for a guy. I mean, what you accidentally just fall? You you tripped and fell That's right in saying. right on top of her, like, and she happened to have her pants off, panties off, and legs spread. Hmm. 
So what would you do, Yogi? This is not that sack talk. Well, you know, I, <laughs> cl- clearly uh, try to be, you know, I, I agree with, I see what Normie's saying. You know, I, I still okay. feel that I, I'm going to stick by hope. Uh, the baby, a uh, baby in the apocalyptic, in a apocalyptic situation, being hope because, you know, it's kind of a, a some symbolic of a genesis, a reestablishment of life, right? But obviously, you want to be, you know, take precautions and not try to try, avo- avoid trying to have babies because, you know, it'll Can't make things really hard. Before the others do. Back door, no babies. That should be the rule. Of the <laughs> back, there you go. Back door. <laughs> Back, there's other things you could do. I mean, backdoor is probably the most the most smart thing because I, see, I was gonna say it, but I, I'm glad you said it before me. But you know, obviously the other approaches wouldn't work because I imagine people are not too fresh and no one's gonna want to get that close to the junk. Oh shit, yeah. That's so true. so you know that 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 makes the most sense, and you can't right. get pregnant that way. But uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah, um, as babies. <laughs> as, as babies. Oh, look at Normie. Hi, Normie. <laughs> oh, she's hopping. Oh, she uh, said, but, uh, it's like, oh, so yeah. hi, Normie. She's hot. <laughs> what? She's hopping. What? Hopping. She's hopping. She's hopping along. A bunny rabbit. <laughs> but, uh, so, so we talked, we, I think we talked upon, upon this last time, uh, in episode 10, we talked about how, uh, Lizzie is really showing her true colors. And I think many of us saw the writing on the wall, but now there's just no doubt that she's freaking batshit crazy. Uh, yeah. tr- trying to smother the baby, you know, and, and Judith really needs to survive. And, and, you know, I, again, I, I look at Judith being alive as uh, hope for everybody and, and something that's going to drive a lot of people. Once they get reunited, they're going to see that she's alive and be like, we can still survive. We can still do this. It's going to definitely, up, you know, be uplifting to their spirits. But then on the flip side, as a narrative tool, it's going to be great because it's obviously going to create some some situations of high tension, you know. And, and, and I think that's going to be a great, great thing for them to really uh, work into the plots now because, you know, they have nowhere to settle down, settle down yet. Uh, right. Yeah, Lizzie's crazy. and uh, Lizzie's bad shit. And Sean is on Team Lizzie for some reason, for, th- for the reasons we discussed, because she wanted to silence, uh, well, I think Obi's about to slip into a vagina right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Sean, Sean gave up off. on... How do you get that? <laughs> Sean gave up on uh, Team Governor and Team Shane, and now he's with Team Lizzie. He conceded yeah. on that, but he said, "Tom, speak, speak to this, Sean. Are Sean, you playing with Team Lizzie, or are you just trolling us?" I... Team Lizzie is smart. Ah, uh... <laughs> you can tell he doesn't believe it anymore. Listen, you, you realize now she's crazy, right, Sean? All right, all right. Liz, Lizzie saved Tyrese. No, she Lizzie didn't. has, huh? How did she save Tyrese? She came with the gun. Uh... The gun. And when the prison got invaded. Oh, good call. All right, fair enough. And uh, you know, I, I think she's logical. Yeah, is Rick gonna kill her? Probably. You can't counter counteract uh, Rick due to uh, Rick killing you. Are you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Team Lizzie, Sean. Why are you on Team Lizzie? You have to be drunk to be on Team Lizzie. <laughs> Because you can't cherry pick her saving Tyree. Think of all the stuff she's done. She's fed rats to the zombies. We're gonna know that's her. Sorry, spoilers. We're talking. Lots. She's I'm got good. a big heart. Just by now. Yeah. She's got a big heart. I think. She's the one that killed big those two people. Tech, <laughs> even though they had the virus, and she tried to. Si- she thinks killing babies is an okay thing to do, even though they're alive and well. So. I don't. I don't know. Getting behind Team Lizzie is like getting behind a new governor. I just can't get behind that. Yeah. Well, in a zombie apocalypse, you know, if they're screaming babies, I mean, that'll get you killed. I mean, you got you got to hold, you got to make them be quiet when you're out in the wilderness like That's that. That's what I'm talking about. If you that freaking, you, you <laughs> no. want it, you want it. What oh, about man. the poor little rabbit that had nothing to do with anything? Right, right, psycho you know? moment. Right, that gives you a serious insight as to who she was and. You know, she's, you know, killing these little rabbits that are just hiding out from the other zombies. And here they are, was assassinated. And she didn't even flinch. She wasn't even looking at them. She was in her zone, killing uh. them, looking straight ahead. And and let's not forget, she was naming the zombies that are at the, at the fence. Right. She's giving them names and, and playing with them, essentially. I mean, she's, she's not right up there. I mean, yeah. She's going to be the death of all of them. All right, yeah. all right. Well, why didn't people think Herschel was crazy whenever he wouldn't kill the zombies? 
Yeah, but he got over that, you know. Yeah, and, yeah and that... but Lizzie's just trying to be nice. No way. <laughs> Herschel had, uh, you know, he had a, a Christian faith crisis where he didn't know uh, what where he should draw the line between his faith and 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 dealing with reality. That was the whole thing, and he did, he felt he felt like if he if he killed those those creatures in there, that he would give up. He'd be giving up hope, you know. Uh, and he couldn't he couldn't bring himself to to killing those people because he he still thought about their humanity, which brings us to a good point as someone uh, brought in, uh, brought up in the chat about you know you know do zombies keep their 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 humanity? Do they keep any of their thoughts from their previous life? And I think in The Walking Dead we've already established that no, they're they're mindless and no. there's nothing left in them. Yeah, sorry, I mean, do you guys think? Well that, they well, already established that in The Walking Dead that it's no, but yeah. Yeah, the CDC when they went to the that thing that doctor told them that there's just one little basically if you look at your head and think about it right here, right in front, right be the bridge of your nose, right in your forehead is like a little flicker of light. That's the only thing on the brain. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. basically enough to make them walk and go. Ugh. Right, right. You know. That's a good point. Good catch. And also Good catch. I, I completely forgot about that. And also, too, in um, I keep wanting to call it Walkerton, but what's uh, the governor's place again? Woodbury. Why do I keep Woodbury? <laughs> I don't know why I want to call it Walkerton. <laughs> Question. Now, whoever can answer it will get the final thought of the day. All right. Whoever can answer yeah. this. Who, what skull were they looking at or what brain were they looking at in the CDC? I remember who was a who. It was uh, the doctor's President? wife. Yeah, correct. Freeman, daddy, you're the winner. Yes! I do want to go back very quickly because uh, in Walkerton, wherever the hell it's called, there was a scene where they were trying, <laughs> they were trying to cha train an old dude to like remember a piece of music right before he died. Yes, yeah. And then he turned, and obviously it didn't work. So I think that was The Walking Dead saying, no, they do not remember. Well, he also did not have enough time to, to run further experiments, you know. That was only one subject that he had. Um, and he spent a lot of time with that one subject. And, and that so, failsafe that the CDC does have, um, half of our government agencies have those failsafe. But what fail the, the blowing up part? Yes. Yeah. At a cat catastrophic event, uh, you know, and I'm going to say it, We'll get to this topic someday. Area 51, they have one because they have so much crap down there. You know, different diseases, strains, you know, aliens, ships, whatever they have down there exactly. If there were a catastrophic event, do you think they want some getting into that? They're going to blow it up. Yeah. That's some Art Bell shit right there. I'm going to try uh, to get into it. I just want to fly a spaceship. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm good. Be like Will Smith. <laughs> I love talking Area 51. All right. I got a fun question for you guys. All right. So, you know, when, uh, Glenn met up with Tara, who was also also stood behind in the prison, right? And this was in uh, also, was it episode 9 or 10? I, I've got them all mixed up now. Ten. I think it was it was 10, right? But uh, there's some speculation that a Tara might go straight and maybe like, you know, Hit on, on Glenn if she's with him long enough. You know, what do you guys think? What do you think, Normie? But... <laughs> well, no, well, let, let, let's That's be honest. Question. There are people that are honestly, I, I honestly believe this. Yeah. There's people that are homosexual because that's what they've always been. That's always what they identified with. And then there's people that go through a phase like experimentation. And she's oh, yeah, kind I, of yeah, an in, she's an inexperienced girl. You could tell she's kind of clumsy and she's all she's talk. Whiny. She's annoying. I hate that character. <laughs> yeah, well. She she's all she's all bark and you know no bite, but uh, I think I I I can see some interesting things happening there. Otherwise, she's gonna be a really bitter girl, and she's gonna be even more annoying. I think she any. needs to die. She's not gonna add anything to the story. Sorry, unless she's she's like a love interest for somebody. But like, I'm trying to figure out what they're trying to do with her. I I just ugh. I think she she's annoyed me. She's I think she's getting a little better. She's getting less whiny. She's becoming a little more useful. She's yeah. taking a little more action. She's being a little more um. Affirmative, I guess you could say, more more resolute in her actions. So, yeah, I don't know. I think her seeing Glenn's uh, resolve to find Maggie, and no matter how much the odds stack against them, 
it makes her realize that, that everybody who seems to fight for it just had that hope kept alive. And see, it comes back to hope, guys. It comes back to hope. It always comes back to hope, my friends. It always comes back to hope. Who's, who's got the echo going? That's Freeman. I don't know. Is that's, it me? That's Freeman, Wake up, Freeman. buddy. I just Turn realized I was talking, off. but nobody was answering. Uh, no, no, no. no I, I hear the echo. No, that's you. I think we're good. What, what, what did you say, Norby? Echo. That I was talking, but then no one was answering me, so I realized that I was still on mute. Whoops. <laughs> Aww. Aww. But I do Sorry. think, like, Beth, and I can't remember this girl's name, but I think they are fillers, as Matt has said. So they can't afford to lose somebody else that not as um, needed in the storytelling. Yeah, I They're feel gonna like the need Walking to soon. Is they're gonna need to kill her. They're gonna need to get rid of not not need to maybe kill somebody, but something catastrophic is gonna need to happen soon. Again, well, I think because the it's gonna Dead start getting a... boring and it's gonna start being the same old show. Oh, we're running from zombies again. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna right. do this or oh, you know whatever. They need to do something cool. I think it's painted itself in a corner a little bit because they're at people that it's gonna be a really hard decision to kill. So mm -hmm. I think every time there's a new character, I'm like. They're just adding this character so that we can invest in someone and they're going to kill him because they're not going to get rid of Glenn anytime soon. Glenn and Maggie, if they're going to kill him off, there's many better times to do it. Isn't yeah. Glenn's the old guy that's freaking in freaking hard case for the chick whose sister died, right? He's Asian, yeah. Oh, yeah. Glenn is the okay. Never mind. Asian, yes, the he's kid. the young, yeah, yeah. the young kid. Glenn can't die. He's their front man. He's the guy that goes out and gets everything. Gets the, you know. Yep. He's very healthy. Healthy. Most healthy. of the main cast is dead now. So, I mean, there's not really many left. Yeah. Who, Rick, well, they got Carl? The new, they got Abraham, Eugene, and Rosita now. I want to well, hear... What... I really want to hear the answers to the next question. <laughs> yes, and I got to take off in about 20 for us. All right, but yeah. but yeah, I think we can all agree that. getting close to it, too. Well, we're almost done with the main points, and then we'll we'll cap it off. But um, I think with the, the, I agree that uh, right now I think they should just uh, yeah, let us form some attachments to these characters and form a new core. Because like Sean said, they've killed off the main cast that we've grown accustomed to, and if they start killing off more people, even if they're just these new people that we don't really care about, it's not gonna really have the same effect, and it's just gonna kind of be pure shock value, no real substance. So it'd be a wasted opportunity to not develop those characters further. And I think they will develop them further. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, another interesting thing happened on episodes uh, nine through eleven, season four point five. Right? <laughs> we have a uh, Tyrese, uh, uh, Carol saved uh, Tyrese and uh, the girls, uh, Lizzie, and I forget what her sister's name is, and Judith. And um, spoiler alert. Yeah, spo spoiler. I should have said it earlier, guys. It's kind of a big deal. But so yeah, Carol's still alive. This whole show is a spoiler alert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went through that on Monday. <laughs> but anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. So yeah, spoiler. <laughs> Carol, who was on Exodus briefly, wasn't even that long, really. She finally meets up with Tyrese's group. And um, it's interesting because he's happy to see her. But you have to wonder... What would happen if he found out about what Carol did back at the prison? And do you guys think that that could happen anytime soon? Like maybe before they even get to Terminus, if they get to Terminus? And how do you think he'll react given the circumstances? I don't even. Mm. <laughs> yeah, anyone could chime in on this. I know there's a toughie. Sean, Sean, you, 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 you've what been. What do you think, Matt? Out. Sean's up there Sean... sleeping in this corner and shit. Yeah, I think we got to get Sean engaged in this because. He's like dipping out. Oh, Sean, what's gonna? I'm here. Gonna, I'm here. Wake what's up, gonna boy! If, when Tyrese figures out what's going on with uh, Carol, if and when. Man, that's a toughie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a right, better well, question. A better question. Do you think he'll find out about it before they get to Terminus? Well, hold up, because this goes back to your other question. Because Lizzie's the one that killed him. Carol yeah, covered. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I, I think. I, I th Solely yeah. believe. Oh, you think Lizzie Carol did. took the fall for what Lizzie did? Absolutely. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah. Oh, Lizzie stabbed him. Oh yes. Lizzie's yeah. the one that killed him. Yeah, <laughs> she's the psycho, and Carol's pr trying to protect him, and that's why when Rick said you have to go, that's why she took it kind of okay because she's like, yeah, that's what I got to do. She didn't fight it too much because she knew she'd give up Lizzie if she did. 
That's right. Actually, yeah, we didn't. T- I don't think we, t- we got to talk about that on, on this show. I know we talked about it before on some other stuff, but yeah, that's a good point to bring up that uh, all this stuff they've been doing to kind of foreshadow Lizzie being this crazy person and the kind of tie- bringing that all together now and tying it all together. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't think they spelled out ver- like they didn't make it completely obvious that Lizzie was the one that burned uh, Tyrese's girlfriend and whoever I forgot who the other body was in the courtyard. But I guess that 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 definitely fits her mo. Um, yep. Hmm. But see, Carol would probably still keep up the the ruse because she doesn't want. She's protective of the kids. She's not. Yeah. Not gonna let them get the heat for that. Tyrus wouldn't no, like kill Lizzie though. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't totally face. agree with that. <laughs> A crime of passion, as they call it, right? I yeah. mean, yeah. I'm I'm trying to put myself in his shoes and how I would react to it and. I think that I wouldn't, I don't think I could take it out on the kid. I'd stay away from her, but I would probably have some serious issue with, with Carol for hiding it. Good call. Yeah. So there's still some anger there. Some yeah. Yes. Yeah. She'll be the scapegoat. I would be understanding. Consider. Yeah. You would yeah, be I mean, understanding? Yep. You think he's had enough time I mean, to come to terms with it? Look at Glenn. He he did. He got better. So they didn't know that you know these two would die. Right. I think it be... was a possibility, but Glenn survived. Mm-hmm. So you know that that fever that that flu that was going around was survivable. Uh, the chances, the probability of survival, were pretty small. But you know. Do you guys think Tyrese has had her long long enough to kind of come to terms with everything? Because he seems like he cooled out, like he's leveled out a little bit now that he has think, a, I don't a think purpose. I don't think it'll blow up too much. I mean, there's probably going to be some tension. There's probably going to be some, you know, why did you do that? Blah, 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 blah. But I really don't think there's going to be a, you know, <laughs> you know, shooter in the head or anything. Um, yeah. Probably not. I think what they're trying to do with the two girls is that they're trying to get him to to get like this this father kind of figure to them, yeah. so that if he can relate to them as a father figure, that it's going to be much easier for him to forgive and move on. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's why Carol's not going to reveal what what Lizzie did because he wants his heart to be softened and no one can get really mad at kids. And I don't think even in Apocalypse it's really hard to get mad at a kid. Unless the kid is wearing a stupid hat and does stupid things. <laughs> well, I'm I'm thinking that Lizzie might just give herself away. She might say something in conversation. Carol won't do it. Probably, yeah. But Oof. she's so disconnected that she'll probably say it. She will probably have no qualms saying it. That being I'll kill him said, like I killed those girls. That being said, when do you guys think if she'll do it? When do you guys think Liz will mess up and say something on accident? Before the end of the season. Well, they then, can't like the next the epi- episode or two. I mean, was it you know one of the last episodes? So. What? What do you guys think? <laughs> Couple of next time we see them, I think it's gonna happen. I think it's been hmm. building up for too long. John, what really? do you think? John. Uh, Sean here. needs I'm his not... wake up juice. No, no, I'm sitting here thinking. <laughs> He's about to fall asleep, I think. Yogi, what do you think, man? Yeah. We'll go back. No, no, no back, I'm Sean. here. We'll come back to you. You can think. I think. Uh, I think they could probably still. Let's see. It's been. Well, like. Yeah, it's been a good. Well, half a, more than half a season since those events took place. Well, no. Yeah, about six episodes or so, seven episodes since that stuff happened, right? So, I think they can still build it up a little longer. I think it's going to happen whenever they get to Terminus. And then, you know, it's going to cause a, a rift in the group. They're going to be like, oh, we can't have this drama here. You guys got to figure this out and get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. That is if Terminus is the sanctuary that seems cracked up to be. So, you know, that's still up for grabs. Because Terminus in itself is a creative liberty they're taking. Uh, really, they're going completely, they're completely deviating from the comics. Uh, as far as I know, from what little knowledge I do, right, Matt? The term mm. is not a thing in the comics. Uh, it it could be. I I I think I know where they're going, and it could be something pretty hardcore. Okay, they could be jumping ahead a lot. But you okay. got to remember too, yeah. though, every place they've gone to, there's been nothing there. 
starting yeah. with you know, the empty C promises CDC, yeah. then you're going to the um, prison, um, and then the a, farm. The farm. Well, the farm that was where they're you know just him and his daughters, you know, just kind of holding out, just like yeah. uh, when uh, Carl got shot by the deer. Right. Right. By the hunter, he's just trying to get some food, but you know, that's uh, he's a really terrible hunter. I nice, but <laughs> it happens though. I think shit, I, shit happens. It does. They could have they could have made the the prison and the farm work, but it came down to stupid human nature. That's really what it came down to. If everybody had their their, their shit together, it would have been fine. But so anyway, a fun fun thing. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but did you notice that that Maggie is apparently uh, bulletproof? <laughs> which, which scene in particular no, are you talking so? about? Yeah, yeah. Which scene? Well, the, as far as episodes nine through eleven go, in episode uh, ten, I think it was when she uh, explored the bus. Oh, Remember yeah. the uh, what's oh, his yeah. face shot the, the zombie shot right behind her. You know. They're standing right in front of her, and they shot the zombie right behind her. It's like, what, did the bullet go through her and hit the zombie? <laughs> that's... Actually, I don't know. The zo it went through the zombie, and it should have gotten... It was an exit wound in the in the zombie. It should have gone through the, the zombie show. and hit her. There's yeah, but when I looked... Zombie killing the show. When I looked at that scene before, because I remember that, she was actually off to the side and not directly behind her. Yeah, but, you know, there was of, an exit from the wound point of... on the... There was a zom uh, an exit one in a zombie. She was right behind the zombie. The way it looked. She was off to the side of the zombie, though. She was wasn't she? directly uh, behind him. No. For I a quick second, it, look, it, it looked like she was in a line of fire. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I Maggie. <laughs> I read it a couple times because I've actually I was like, what, did she did she just get shot in the face and she didn't die? <laughs> right. Now I think they set I... it up like that to make you think for a second. Like, no. There's a there's been a few scenes though where someone's about to get eaten and then like someone like from behind shoots the zombie in the head. Yeah, and a bunch of that. Considering the zombie heads are like you can squ you can step on them lightly and they break in this yep. show, you'd want to stay away from that. I think. Right? Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> you don't want to full, full, form a full circle around your targets and end up shooting each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not the optimal formation. <laughs> That'd be Darwin at its finest, just taking care. <laughs> hey, here's one for you, uh, if Freeman. Um, what yeah. do you What are you thinking, man? Dude, we we lay some heavy stuff here. Sean's like, man, yeah. you guys are going deep. I think he's hitting his own hookah pipe. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm something. sitting here thinking. Yeah, I really don't know where The Walking Dead's gonna go. You know, you got you got the so many people on the railroad tracks. They're split up, but. It, it's, I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, well, we talked about this last, I, last, I am too. last time. We said, we said that the show has at least, you know... Well, Sean felt like it has uh, unlimited possibilities. Matt said it, they have a good, solid season left. Uh, Obi said they have maybe two or three. Well, and I'm I'm kind of in the middle. I think I think I think they they have, they have a lot of a lot to work with, and they're setting up a lot of stuff. I think they have a a, a solid two seasons left. But they definitely got to build up the characters, you know, a little more for for stuff to make sense and matter. Right. Well, and then I'm gonna ch I'm gonna no, change absolutely. a little bit of what I'm saying too. I, I, um, I think that they can make any story. Because I've, I I I said that last week because I hadn't watched. I mean, I was only up to like episode ten. So that being said, from last week to this week, I think they have plenty of directions and opportunities that they can go in. Mm -hmm. Do I see him doing most of them? No, because then that would just totally somewhat off throw off track the show. Now there are several that I think, and I, we can get on this offline, but several I think that they can different directions that they can go in that they haven't even touched or even talked about yet. So I yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's quite a few directions that can go in. There's a few themes that. Normie, you weren't here last week. What do you think? It's about real life. Um, for me. as far as solid seasons, I would I I agree with Yogi. I don't think. I think anything more than two seasons from now would be too much. Just because it at least this season so far is seeming a little on the dry end. So and I am not a I'm not a comic or a graphic uh, novel reader of The Walking Dead. So I don't know where they have twisted and turned there that they could add, but I would think maybe two more seasons. And then, you know, it would be time to say goodbye. 
or at least spin it off, or at, or at really least spin it off into a different show. Keep me going. Ah, or, or at least spin it off, good. or spin it off into a different show to where like just one or two of the characters went from The Walking Dead to, you know, I don't know, Zombie well, 2020 or whatever you want. Well, to call we were it. watching the webisodes, and I liked how they were showing us a little different story, um, mm -hmm. but it was like Eric, Eric, Rick was not even involved. And mm -hmm. but like towards the end of one of the webisodes, you know, they had written a sign on on one of the doors at the hospital, which you later, well, where you first saw Rick at the beginning of mm -hmm. the whole thing. So I thought that that was a really good idea. And if, you know, they take that direction, you know, that would be something I'd really like to watch because it might be same the repeat same repeat stories, you know, with finding safe havens in different places. But now you get to learn new people and create this um i don't know like create this this family i guess you know a whole new family of for the walking dead so that would be pretty neat i don't know if i could watch something in the future though um you know the same old same old kind of thing if that makes sense okay well, but, but, but think about it the same old same old type stuff right and then you got it you know you might get a little tired of it imagine the walking dead gone I mean, we're not going to get another thing like it. Yeah. We're not going to get the goodness of it. So for me, you know, for not liking it all the time, I would rather have it around for five or six more seasons. That's where as the spinoff shows come out, right? Yes. That's what this, yeah. That's not, that is the segue that, that actually Obi set up. Uh, they, they had confirmed that they do have the spinoff show coming in 2015. So it's going to probably run alongside season five or in between the seasons. So that, that'd be interesting. And I think it's still in early development as far as I've seen. Like they still right. have, uh, they, they haven't released too much about what's going to happen other than they're going to be following a completely different group of people. What, what you got on that, Obi? Um, that's going to be, with this being a winter uh, series or a spring series, you know, spring and then fall or whatever, mm -hmm. however they do it, that's going to be the opposite of what this one actually going to go to a spring from a spring series to like a fall series so it's just going to be, good. be a different cool. part of the year um, it'll fill in the gap and what you said yeah. i i was i read all that i'll give you guys the website here when i can find it again um but a lot of the spin-offs what they're going to do actually is they're actually like you said they're going to follow a whole nother group of people and something that they're trying to do with the walking dead is to be able to spin it off to where Maybe here soon that this group meets that new group, and then they go off in their separate ways, or they walk together a little bit, or you know, mm -hmm. something of that effect. But it's not going to be, uh, what I hear, it's not going to be. It's basically just going to be exactly what we have now, but it's basically a different name and a different cast. All right. Well, I know that uh, Norma and Matt have to leave us soon, so we'll wrap up this discussion. Uh, Sean, you gonna stay with us? Uh, actually, you can do it. It's zombie time. Sean right? worked an entire day. I, <laughs> I don't. I. I we yeah, got. Well, we got well, stay, I went in, I, I went in at five a.m. tonight. Man. Aww. All right. You have to be properly caffeinated for for horseplay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I realized that tonight. <laughs> well, all right. So, um, the last thing I wanted to say. Well, I don't know if we'll have enough to, to, time to talk about this. So we'll just say, uh, if if you guys are interested. Anybody listening in or, t or watching the video, uh, if you want to read more about this kind of stuff and keep this, the conversation going, uh, definitely be check out our friends over at the Zombie Blog and at Zombie Cast. Uh, those websites are thezombieblog.net and zombiecast.net. And um, we'll do some uh, more plugs here okay, before the guys leave. But uh, definitely check those websites out. And we'll also have some more zombie content to keep the uh, Zombie Talk series going. Uh, over at uh, geekyantics.wordpress.com. So, uh, guys, you gotta before you leave, you want to plug anything, and then uh, uh, Obi and I. Uh, are we gonna wrap up the show after this, uh, yeah. Obi? Okay. I want to plug Matt. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go on to our plugs. <laughs> plug I was gonna say I want to plug. Obi. Bend over, Matt. Freeman, Bend what over. you got today, man? Give me your plugs for your shows. Uh, uh, me and Norma do a show called Knuckleballer Radio, which is live nine o'clock p.m. Eastern. Every Sunday night at allgames.com forward slash chat. 
And then uh, we do zombiecast.net, the three of us, and then at, you know Teddy can add it in. And zombiecast, you know, we, we got some uh, good recent shows. You know, uh, we had a chance to talk to Great Nicotero, Stephen Young, which is Glenn on the show. Uh, we've had the 68 Comic Crew on, uh, Nat Jones, uh, Norma's friend, you know, the, the director for uh, the Blur Witch Project. Tons of good content. Yep. Yep. Wow. Ed Sanchez and uh, Dave oh, Fenoy <laughs> from the Telltale uh, Games, The Walking Dead, which got Game of the Year last year, was just on a couple weeks ago. And Matt Moat from the Zombie Research Society. So we've had a lot of good guests over there. You got a lot of good content. But give the Zombie Cast a chance. Guys, go over there and listen to it. Zombiecast.net. Guys, make Absolutely. sure you guys check that out. Uh, zombiecast.net. They do uh, run that show on Mondays at 9? Uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern so Standard. My friends. And, and guys... we've been growing, man. A lot of people has been lo- liking it lately. So, uh, you know, we're feeling good about it. Just go give us a chance. Zombiecast.net. Very, very. Matt, what about you? Uh, ditto what Sean said about Zombiecast. Uh, Tuesday nights on PGO until they kick me off or I quit. Which is coming to a <laughs> coming to a head fairly soon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then uh, uh, you can read my stuff at GamesRadar.com and uh, in trade magazines across Canada. And guess what? The world record. And Matt, we're gonna yeah, campaign. World records. That's right. Matt, we're gonna campaign to keep you on VGO because that's one of the few reasons I listen to him. And Michelle, Michelle's nice. I don't even know if this point is that something I want people to campaign for. <laughs> oh no. Well, you have fans. You have fans on. Yes, on, uh, you do have VGO. fans. I do, and I love them all. So they can come to Zombie Cast, and they'll be we'll amalgamate. There you go. Definitely. We'll, we'll go ahead, Yogi. Uh, go ahead and plug our uh, our stuff. We are on. Uh, yes, yeah, so Horse Plays on uh, uh, on Stitcher, and uh, the heck did I, I thought I updated this. And we're working on getting our iTunes, Oops. but they've been having trouble on their system. I'm getting some weird errors, so we're trying to work that out. Uh, but be sure to leave us some reviews, favorite, subscribe. We're on Talk Show. If you're a podcaster and you have your show on there, make sure you leave us a review on there. And give us a thumbs up on uh, Stitcher. You could do unlimited. A lot of people don't know, but you could do unlimited thumbs up per episode on Stitcher. And they count. That's how you show up. I mean, some people game it, unfortunately. But, you know, if you genuinely like what you listen to, thumbs up as much as you want, you know, and, and it helps us get up on um, on the search results. I forget what category we're on. We've moved around. I think we're on technology. Then we're in gaming. Yeah, or they're in moving us like crazy. Or, or, com- or comedy. Because <laughs> we got a little bit of everything going on. But uh, yeah, the more listeners we got, what things. we got. What's that? We got a plethora of things going on. A whole a whole plethora. <laughs> yeah. <That's> right. <laughs> but, but, but more listeners means we can run more promotion. I got a buttload of games that I want to give away uh, soon. Uh, to help oh. spread spread the word, uh, so stay tuned oh. for that. My steam my steam inventory looks pretty bloated right now, <laughs> oh. and we'll be doing some uh, community playdates too, like just gaming on random stuff like Rock Band or any anything that's just fun. So we're doing that too. Uh, Royalty free music is on on our show. It's provided by Technowax with a K on YouTube. So if you want to avoid uh, Google's Beat Stick and you want to put some music on your video content or whatever. You know, you don't want to pay royalties, you know. Make sure you check that out. <clears throat> what else we got? Uh, skip hey, that. Make sure you guys uh, check out our friends. And um, he's probably, Yogi probably said a few of these, but we're going to make sure you guys check out our friends at Gaming History 101. Sega Nerds, the game yeah. of the shrew. Gaming of the shrew, formerly Sega Addicts. <laughs> RPG. Yeah. RP Grinders. R9 Cast. Knuckleballer Radio. Zombie Cast. Yo! And B Team podcast on all games network and Stitcher and or Stitcher. Uh, you guys rock. Are, you have a good uh, yes. show are, going on. These are a ton yeah. of of great podcasts. If you guys do enjoy ours, you will definitely enjoy theirs. I promise you. Um, and you guys just make sure you guys check us out at Gang, um, including the Zombie Cast, the uh, the Zombie Blog, and say that word, Casturbus. Casturbus. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we do on our site. If you know, we we give a lot of love on our on our on our network. It's basically what we do. We see content that we like, we reblog it, and we give proper credit so people go to your site. To, they'll drive traffic to you. I'm not one of those people. When I develop a website, I don't feel like, oh, don't give your traffic away. If I see something I like, 
I, I give love to that site because I know someone would do the same thing if they have integrity. <laughs> and the last thing that we do want to say from uh, Obi One X Two and Yogi Zilla, um, and everybody here, uh, the horse play, horse play family, we do really, really appreciate everybody's response and just overwhelming for for our show. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I'm I'm just a disabled vet, so I don't really get to do. But I really, really appreciate. It. I enjoy doing this every single week. Sometimes we're sick. Sometimes we're just having a bad day. But with everybody helping us out, staying up late, we just want to appreciate. We really appreciate everybody and anybody that's listening and or watching. With that hey, being dude, said. I want, thank you. I want to thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I'm Canadian, but I'll thank you because that's great, man. That's, that's awesome. But anyway, with that being said. <laughs> With that being you said, us, guys, kind of, don't you? <laughs> with that being said, we're gonna close this season. Season. Wow, we're gonna close <laughs> this episode, Knights of the Zombie Geeks, part two. There could be a part three in the makings here in the future. I think so. I'm pretty yeah. sure we're gonna just series this out. So you guys And, and we stay. made it. We made it through our Walking Dead segment. That's we that's did. important. We it's did. a milestone. Thank you. We just guys. don't want to make sure you that know, you guys uh go ahead. Me- Go ahead, Matt. Say, I took great effort not to tr- derail this time, so you did you know, I'd like I'm to very take proud that as a victory for myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take uh, full credit for not derailing this time around. And uh, again, just uh, reflecting what Sean and Normia said, you guys are awesome. It's been a fun time. I think that's why yeah. derails because um, you don't get that when you have a, a no no chemistry. Or you're not having a good time. Exactly. No. But there you go. that's it from Horseplay. This is Obi One X Two along with Yogi Zilla. Freeman Daddy 5, Normie 477, and Matt o. McFly. We'll see you, you guys right. next time. Have a plethora of a good day, guys. I love you guys. A whole plethora. For awful carnal knowledge. Did you see my uh, Dr. Who there? I did this for you, Yogi. See? Oh, awesome. Doctor, it's Christmas Doctor Who. By, by the way, late late plug. We're, we're, we're going to do a little special episode. It's uh, Dr. Doctor Who. Jones Lego. He can't swim. Just don't put him next to snakes. Music, music song. Got a hold. Once again, everybody from listening and watching here, horseplay. This is episode eleven. We really appreciate you watching and listening. We'll see you guys next week.